Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be replacing a train heat exchanger. Uh, as you can probably already tell, I got the heat exchanger, my tools, everything I need here up on the roof. I'm gonna get everything ripped apart. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to replace this heat exchanger. They're relatively easy. I condemned this heat exchanger in a previous video. I'm gonna put a link to that right up here. If you wanna go ahead and check out that video and see how I found this uh, bad heat exchanger, click there. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody, I got the back panel off. And as you can see right there is the bad spot on the heat exchanger. Got the power off. I've got all the panels open. So that's first thing. The gas is off from the last time I was here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, gas line taken apart. I'm gonna remove this panel here. I'm gonna pull out the uh, gas valve burner assembly and we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get all our wiring pulled off and pulled over into the compressor compartment so it's all out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my zip ties here so we can get everything freed up. Uh, take note of where all the wires go. I'm pretty familiar with these units, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything pulled out and we're gonna pull these burners. All right, so now we got all our wires free. We can just pull them all over into this compartment, and then they're out of the way and ready to be wired back up when we're all done. Another thing you're going to want to do is remove this uh, little grommet here. Uh, when you pull this heat exchanger out, it rides right along this edge, and uh, a lot of times this will this will hold you up. Got those two grommets out of the way. I got everything pulled over. Pull this off, save it. So, all our wiring is loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the gas valve and the orifices out of the way. And you just got four simple screws. Remove those and it'll come right out. And there you go. To get the burners out, you gotta get an extension. There's all the burners, your flame sensor, your igniter, your uh, rollout switch, and uh, your pressure switch. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, once we get to that point, we're gonna be replacing all the burners and all those components. All right guys, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is get the drain pan out. So go ahead and uh, remove your drain, your drain trap, your male adapter there. Yeah. It's gonna pull straight out the other end it's also a good opportunity to clean this drain uh, pan. So let's go ahead and pull it out. It's relatively easy. I'm on you. It's kind of sticking down, so you got to wiggle it a little bit and get it loose, but it should come out. And there it goes. And there's our drain pan. Not too uh, dirty, but we'll go ahead and make sure that's good and clean before we put it back in. All right, go ahead and uh, get your snorkel taken off the combustion blower. I just leave the combustion blower right attached right to the heat exchanger. Actually gives you something to pull on. So our next step here is to get this side panel removed. Get the screws. You can see we've got one, two, three screws that enter into the side of the heat exchanger. That's why we had to remove the drain pan. And also we're gonna have to um, get this removed the blower motor and the adjustment plate and then this uh, other plate underneath it to get to those other screws so I like to get this all freed up and then we can take the motor and just place it right up on top of the unit all right to get these screws out guys I'm gonna be using this DeWalt right angle attachment 
and as you can see it just magnetically clicks right in and then you're able to get in there All right, so I was able to get all three of those screws out with the right angle attachment. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get this motor uh, and the adjustment plate taken out so we can get access to the other screws that are holding the heat exchanger in. All right, guys, go ahead and stick all your bolts right up there in the electrical panel. That way you don't lose them. All right, you're going to want to get these screws taken out. There's a couple of screws coming in from the other end. And then this whole plate's going to come out. You're going to be able to get your side plate out. All right, we got all the screws out. So this whole plate should uh, come loose now. Oh, I lost, forgot. Got one last screw. You'll have that. So get all these screws out. You got to remove this whole plate to get to the screws that are holding the uh, heat exchanger in. And as you can see, it's, oh man, two screws I forgot. I got one more right here. All right, now I've got all the screws out. And as you can see, this whole plate comes right out. You can kind of wiggle it around this uh, line set. I'm gonna put the camera down so I don't mess anything up. All right, so now we've got our side plate, our top motor plate out, burners, uh, gas valve, orifices, the snorkel. Um, we've got these panels, the drain pan out. We've got our blower motor and our adjustment plate out. Now the reason we had to remove this adjustment plate, motor, and motor mounting bracket is because right here, we've got screws holding the heat exchanger in place. We've got them here, one, two, three. And also along this side, one, two, and three. All right, guys, I'm just going to give it another look. Make sure we've got all the screws out along this edge. We've got all the screws out along the top. And we've got all the screws out along this edge over here in the compressor compartment so we should be ready to pull this thing out so i'm going to give it a small tug but more than likely i'm going to have to uh give it a shove and a, give it a push from the other end All right, guys, so it's completely out now. And as you can see, we've got minimal amounts of damage as far as the uh, insulation goes. I'm gonna get some metal back tape. I'm gonna seal up this insulation here. I'm also gonna seal up right here. And we're gonna kind of clean things up a little bit before we stick the new one in. All right, guys, I got the new heat exchanger up on its end. Uh, these heat exchangers come with these turbulators and they have these little clips and they're 
uh, heat resistant material. They're very uh, fragile and the clips have to be in just right. So make sure those clips are fully seated into the turbulator and it's pushed in and uh, you shouldn't have any problems. I'm also going to save the old turbulators out of the old unit if they're not broke because uh, a lot of times these come on the new heat exchanger broken in half or deteriorated just from shipping so it's always a good idea to keep those uh, throw them in a shoe box and put them on a shelf i'm going to go ahead and get the new combustion blower put into place on this new heat exchanger all right guys you got your new combustion blower here and you got this gasket so just peel the uh sticker off stick it in place line up your holes screw it in place We're gonna go ahead and get our new limit switch put in and it's just gonna go right in this spot here. So I've got my uh, limit screwed in. I got my combustion blower in place and really that's about all you're gonna wanna put on before you put the heat exchanger back in. So we'll get it screwed in and uh, just keep moving on with this thing. All right, guys, this is where having two people on these jobs helps out a little bit because I'm gonna have to lift up on this heat exchanger and get it to rest on this support back here. But I've got everything pushed in, so it should line up right. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back into place. I'll get my scratch all out. We'll get all the holes lined up and get it screwed back into place. All right, guys, small hiccup here. Apparently, the new heat exchanger for this model is six inches shorter than the old one. Um, it is the correct heat exchanger. I checked with Train and they sent an adapter kit. So what I gotta do is pull this blower and install a new air baffle, which is this piece here. And also I have to drill holes and remount this uh, support bracket six inches in. So I don't know how much I'm gonna film of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the lid, get the blower, get that air baffle replaced, drill some holes, move this support bracket in, and we should be in good shape. All right, guys, I got the lid pulled enough that I'm gonna be able to get to the screws on the back side of this uh, blower housing. That way I can pull it out and see exactly what they want me to do with this um, new air baffle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these screws pulled out. I'll go ahead and pull this blower out and uh, I'll show you what we gotta do to um, retrofit this unit to a, a shorter size heat exchanger. All right, guys, so this is where the new baffle goes. Just clips right over that. It doesn't say to screw it down or anything, so I think I'm gonna take some uh, foam tape and run it along here. That way it'll just hold it in place. I don't have to worry about the uh, blower knocking it down into the ductwork when I uh, go to reinstall the blower. But uh, this is the new air baffle. All right, not so bad. I got the new support arm uh, secured in place. Not too bad, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, tape over this hole and this hole, and I think we're gonna be in good shape. This took me about 20 minutes to do everything I did here, so it's not really like it was an increase in the time on the job to uh, get this taken care of, so. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and button this up. I'm gonna get that blower put back in, and I'm gonna get this heat exchanger in. I got the blower in, and uh, one of my favorite tools for finding holes is the scratch hole. If you guys don't have one of these, it makes it real easy getting stuff lined up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this um, screwed back in, and I'll show you what that air baffle looks like from the underside. So I guess just the uh, blower housing being in place holds that baffle in, but I put a little bit of tape in there just so it would hold it, and then. You can see this is what it looks like from the underside. I guess it's just to direct that air over that uh, shorter heat exchanger. 
And like I said, I got the uh, support arm in place, so let's get this thing going. There we go guys, that looks a little better. Now it's supported. I'm not sure exactly why, I'm sure it's to direct air properly over this heat exchanger. I just followed the instructions and, and it was relatively easy. Now that we've got it in place, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the screws put in. Hopefully they don't all start coming like this. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the shortage on um, parts or what. But I did call train, I did confirm this was the correct heat exchanger. Uh, maybe it's just a redesign, I didn't really ask. I said, okay, let me go ahead and get started. So that's what I did. Drill a hole, move this, pull the blower, add the baffle. You should be in good shape. Uh, if any of you guys have run into this modification, uh, replacing a train heat exchanger, let me know in the comments. It did come with these installation instructions, heat exchanger replacement for a shorter heat exchanger replacement. Uh, just shows you all the models there. Mine is on the list, and I did call to confirm. So, uh, I just do the work. Getting all these holes to line up is a little easier when you got two guys, but that's why I use the scratch all. You're able to lift and pull a little bit and uh, find those holes, get everything to line up. Uh, so. Slowly but surely, I'm getting this bottom one to line up. I gotta kinda prop up the bottom end of the heat exchanger, but uh, we'll get it. All right, now we got it. Oop, go the right direction, there we go. All right. So, that was probably the most difficult screw to get on this whole thing, because I had to leverage the back of the unit. I had to use my um, scratch all to line everything up, but we've got one, two, three, and on this side, we got one, two, three back in place. We gotta get three on this side, and then our heat exchanger is completely screwed back in. We can start putting these plates back in. All right, one, two, and three in place. I like it, we're getting somewhere now. And I got my side panel and my motor mounting plate in loosely. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the screws put back in and uh, we'll get this motor mounted. Got our side panel in, got our motor mounting bracket in. We're gonna pull the blower motor down and get it bolted into place. The uh, motor adjustment plate is back in place. We're gonna go ahead and get this belt put back on and uh, adjust the tension. And you just get it on there. I kind I like these uh, uh, tension plates on these trains. They're pretty slick. There's some kind of mechanism in there that you just uh, adjust and it. It moves the entire plate. It's pretty, pretty easy. So let me get my wrench. You just adjust it and you'll see the, uh, the plate move. There we go. And it usually stays right in place. Um, sometimes you got to get two nine sixteenths on it, but so we uh, we get the belt tightened up, and once you do that, just tighten up the lock nut, and that's it. Nice and snug. All right, guys. So this is where we're at now. Blower's back in. Blower motor's back in. Belt is nice and uh, tight, not too tight. Uh, I've got my combustion blower mounted. I've got my limit in. Um, I've got things taped up that needed to be taped up. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and replace the burners, flame sensor, and igniter on the uh, burner assembly. All right, guys. So we've got new burners, new rollout, new pressure switch, new flame sensor, and new igniter. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And you can see that comes loose just like that. And that's it. You can set this off to the side. You 
get your pressure switch out of there. Now these are all the same burners. They're all open on each end. I know Carrier, they have ones where the uh, ends are pinched. You gotta be real careful about that. I checked, these are all the same part number. I looked at them, they're all open on the carryover tube. So you're good to just put them in any old way you want. I usually put them in with the info up, you know. And look at that, made in the USA. Not assembled, made. I like that. All right, so there your burners are now in place. We'll get the new rollout put in. that our new pressure switch will go right back in place put in our bracket for our flame sensor and igniter and that's that everything looks even and nice just the way it looked before so so now that we've got the uh, burners all replaced, we're gonna go ahead and redope this fitting and tighten it up, make sure it's good. You don't want a gas leak there. Um, filling up that burner compartment might go boom. So it shouldn't take much. We're just gonna unthread that uh, re-pipe dope and tighten it up. Got a little bit of that blue magic on there. I got everything tight. We're gonna go ahead and uh, remount our burners just in like that and we're gonna be good shape here real soon all right so our burners are now back in place We're in good shape there. Clean the trap out. I'm gonna go ahead and prime it. It's warm out today. Always drink your water. So we've got the orifices in, the gas valve, the gas line is all nice and snug. Uh, I gotta get the, uh, before I button up the gas, I gotta get the panel put over this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two side panels put back in place. We'll pull the wiring back in, get it all uh, wired back up. Now that we got that panel on, let's go ahead and get this snorkel put back in place. Um, before you put the panel on, it's just a little hard to uh, wiggle it in without this in place. All right, so I've got all my wires pulled back through and uh, we're getting real close here. I'm gonna go ahead and wire everything up and we're gonna be ready to fire up here very soon. All right, guys, last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and swap out this ignition control board, block off the supply duct, and we're gonna fire this thing. 
All right, guys, I'm getting the uh, panels put back on. I want to block off this supply. That way we don't fill up the store with smoke. Uh, the supply access panel that goes here actually doesn't fit inside to block that off. If you take the return access panel and flip it upside down, stick it in there, it actually fits perfect. So this is the most ideal situation for blocking off the duct if you don't want to stink out the customer. I mean, if they're a pain in the butt, maybe you do want to stink them out. So it's up to you. But in case you ever run into that issue, uh, the return supply air cover uh, fits perfectly in the uh, downflow supply duct. So you can just take that off, block it off, and you're good to go. All right. And finally, kick your gas back on. Yeah, baby. There we go. Should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out W, and we're going to fire this thing up. All right, I got R and W jumped out. Everything's wired up. Let's go ahead and apply power. All right, and there we go. Combustion blower is it good. I didn't bleed out the gas line, so it might take a couple of tries to. Uh, there we go. Go ahead and shut this off right now. We're going to check the gas pressure. Three point three six. It's good to me. Now we'll go ahead and let this thing. Uh, go ahead and let this thing. Oh boy, look at that. It's smoking. Yeah, that's exactly why you want to block off that supply duct. You fill a store up with that, and you don't let them know. Uh, fire alarm going off, managers panicking, customers running out the front door. So I always let them know that we're replacing the heat exchanger. You might catch some smell. We're going to block off the supply duct, but this is exactly why. Oh, that smoke. You don't want that. There we go. All right. So, gas pressure's good, blower's good, electrical's good. We're just gonna let this thing run and uh, get all the stink off of it. And they'll be good for winter now with a brand new heat exchanger. So, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all my mess, get all my tools buttoned up and ready to go down to the van. And then uh, we'll uh, button this unit up completely and uh, go from there. So we're gonna let this thing burn off just a little bit longer. I'm still getting a hint of uh, stink when I smell it, but I got the tools are just about cleaned up. What I normally do is just get in here and just give it a sniff. And uh, the longer it burns off, the better in my opinion. That way when the first cold hits, they don't call because of the stink. All right guys, and I wanted to verify this thing was working in air conditioning, so uh, I went down and kicked it down just to make sure it was calling from the thermostat. Now we'll put a couple of screws in this panel. I'm gonna walk around the unit. I'm gonna make sure my disconnect's on, which it is. I'm gonna make sure I got screws in every one of these panels. So I'm gonna throw some screws in this. I'm gonna go around, make sure, and then uh, we're gonna be done. All right, guys, that's gonna do it on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. A heat exchanger replacement on this train unit with a little hiccup halfway through with uh, having to pull that blower out, put that new air baffle in and relocate that support rod. But uh, it was no big deal. Just uh, added about 20 minutes, half hour onto the job. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. If you did like that video, please hit subscribe. Hit that bell icon. That'll notify you anytime I got a new video coming out. Please leave me a comment, hit like. I appreciate you watching from Madison, Ohio. I'm gonna call it a day on this one and I'll see you on the next one.